I will now prove the anti-symmetric, also known as alternating, property of the determinant, which states that when you switch two columns or rows in a matrix, the determinant changes sign. And this property is particularly fun to prove, because as you will see, everything will work out just right. Also, as we mentioned before, one of the immediate consequences of this property is the fact that if you have two identical columns or rows in a matrix, the determinant must be zero. In fact, let's first show how the alternating property implies that. Let's look at this 5x5 five five matrix with two identical columns, columns 2 and 4. And let's consider what will happen to the determinant when we switch these two columns. On the one hand, the matrix will remain unchanged, and therefore the determinant will remain unchanged. On the other hand, by the alternating property, the determinant will change sign. Therefore, the determinant of this matrix is a number that equals minus itself. So it's got to be zero. And that proves that property. Now let's turn our attention to proving the alternating property itself. And we'll do what we always do. We'll consider just a single pattern from the determinant out of the n factorial. And by analyzing what happens to the corresponding term from the determinant, we'll be convinced that the exact same thing happens to all the terms from the determinant, and that therefore the alternating property holds. So in this case, we're looking at a 5 by 5 matrix and switching columns 2 and 4. And we're considering this familiar pattern. And if we're now looking at the new matrix, and we're looking for the term that consists of the same values, it now has to be this pattern. Because this column brought this value with itself right here, and this column brought this value with itself right here. And I think this picture convinces us that the two determinants consist of the same n factorial terms. The signs may be different, but the way the entries of the matrix are combined into terms is the same. That's because if this pattern had exactly one entry in each row and one in each column, then the switched pattern will also have exactly one entry in each row and one in each column. So the collections of terms are the same for both matrices, for both determinants. The question is, what are the signs in front of those terms? And for that, we once again have to analyze the corresponding permutations. And we're familiar with this permutation. Let me remind you, we have to march down the rows and name the columns. And so it becomes 2, 3, 5, 4, 1. 2, 3, 5, 4, 1. What's the corresponding permutation in the other matrix? Well, let's see. Let's once again march down rows and name the columns. 4, 3, 5, 2, 1. Once again, 4, 3, 5, 2, 1. Let me write it down, and then we'll look at the permutation side by side. 4, 3, 5, 2, 1. Okay. And do you see how these two permutations are related? Of course you do. The 2 and the 4 traded places. That's not at all surprising, of course. This happened because we switched columns 2 and 4, so it's completely unsurprising that as a result of that, the numbers 2 and 4 traded places in these two permutations. That means that this permutation is exactly one switch away from this one. If you switch the 2 and the 4 back, you'll have this permutation. So if this permutation is odd, which it is, this one must be even. And of course, that happens for all the patterns in the determinant. When you switch two columns, you will end up, the corresponding term will be associated with a permutation that's exactly one switch away from the original permutation. That's what I mean by saying everything works out just right. And so each term in the determinant will change its sign. And therefore, the determinant will change its sign. And that completes the proof. So let's consider just one more simple example. Take a look at this matrix 
and determine its determinant. And it has to be 36 because this determinant is one column switch away from the determinant that we considered before, which was lower triangular, and therefore its determinant was the product of the diagonal entries, which were 3, 1, 2, and minus 6. Therefore, the determinant of that matrix was minus 36, and this matrix, being one switch away from the original matrix, has determinant minus minus 36, or 36. And let's also document what happened here. All right, and that's it for the alternating property.